And good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in to 12 News at Noon. I'm Nick Canizales. Well, Port Arthur Police received a report around 10 o'clock this morning of two people that went in the water at the Keith Lake Bridge along Highway 87 South and did not come up. Officials arrived on the scene and called for a medical helicopter and assistance from the Jefferson County Marine Unit. Now, 12 News has a crew at the scene and we'll keep you updated as we learn more on air and online at 12newsnow.com. Coming from Houston today, chemical incident at a chemical plant prompts a shelter in place and voluntary evacuation order. It happened around 730 local time at a Dow chemical facility in Laporte. Officials say that hydroethanol uh, accelerated or HEA was released from a tanker. HEA is an uh, acrylic that's used in coating and adhesives. Now Dow representatives say that there was no indication of any offsite impact and the evacuations were cautionary. Video from the scene shows fire crews doused in a tanker trailer with water from multiple directions at the site. Now, while the impacted region includes mostly industrial facilities, at least one neighborhood is within the evacuation zone. So far, there are no reports of any injuries. Two people are in custody after a quadruple homicide in East Texas, New Somerville early Tuesday. Now, according to officials, one person was found in the driveway and three others were found in a white mobile home behind the house. Officials say all four died of an apparent gunshot wound. A 2017 Dodge Charger was stolen from one of the victims, was found abandoned along a nearby highway. As of now, officials don't have a motive at this time. Police say tips led to the police to two people who were taken into custody for questioning. All right, taking a look outside this afternoon. The weather was absolutely gorgeous this morning, especially the temperature. Let's get an update now on your forecast with Jeff. Good afternoon. Yeah, it looks like a uh, pretty quiet out there for this morning. We had a couple of showers down towards the coast. A few of those snuck up towards Port Arthur. And right now we have just uh, a little bit of rain down right along the coast of being passed there. Uh, most of the area is dry for this morning. As we take a look at the allergy index, medium on weed and mold. Grass is low and there's nothing to talk about there on the tree. As we look at the rest of the day forecast, we'll go with a 20% chance of a couple of showers uh, around 2 o'clock as we hit about 90 today. We'll back off to about 85 at 6 o'clock with possibility of a 30, maybe 40% coverage of uh, some scattered rain. Probably 40% would be uh, the highest we could go there. And then at 10 o'clock, uh, dry with partly cloudy skies as temperatures fall back into the upper 70s. We will take a look at your forecast coming up in just a little bit. It looks like a dry, hot weekend. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. For any Lamar student, listen up. There are some big savings in store for students getting their higher education in Southeast Texas thanks to additional state funding approved two years ago. Lamar Institute of Technology, Lamar State College Orange, and Lamar State College Port Arthur are now able to reduce the cost of tuition this upcoming school year. The state funding came out to an additional $17 million to help students pay for their two-year degrees. In total, tuition and mandatory fees will come out to around $1,770 per semester. That's based on 15 semester credit hours. Speaker Dade Phelan played a huge role in pushing for this change. Total reporter Kara Willis spoke with him, and he says that he's very thrilled that this opportunity will help Southeast Texas students get into the workforce quicker without the barrier of high tuition over their heads. It will do an incredible amount of good for all of Southeast Texas. The education that will be provided to these students will result in a better economy for many, many years to come. State funding for Lamar State College has increased by $47 million since 2019 after efforts between Speaker Dade Phelan and the previous speaker, Dennis Bonin. Now the reduction will go into effect this upcoming fall semester. Since tuition rates have decreased, Lamar State Colleges have seen positive results on its campus, including 17% increase in enrollment, 55% increase in dual credit enrollment, and 124% increase in online credit hours. Now, Lamar State College of Port Arthur and Lamar State College of Orange are both offering buy one class, get one class free, along with buy two, get two free classes this fall. Plus, students can also still use federal student aid or FAFSA. A new website called Ransomware.com launched for the government will help protect against cyber and ransomware attacks. This will help everyone from individual people to small businesses and even Fortune 500 companies. Ransomware is the number one cybersecurity threat to everyone. The website is a response to multiple high-profile hacks like the ones we saw in the Colonial Pipeline and also food processing company JBS Hacks. This was created by Homeland Security and the Justice Department. 
The Department of Homeland Security calls it a one-stop shop. It hopes will inform everyone on how to protect our data. I don't, don't forget, even regular people can become victims of cyber attacks. Now, everyone has sensitive information like banking information, your social security number, personal emails, etc. So listen up here. So here's some ways you can protect yourself from personal data. First, don't use simple passwords. Second, use the multi-factor authentication. Third, update your software. Don't ignore those notifications. And lastly, encrypted storage backup. These can secure your data offline. Well, today, Texas Governor Greg Abbott scheduled to sign the anti-fentanyl bill. Now, the bill enhances criminal penalties for manufacturing and distributing fentanyl in Texas. Under the new law, the punishment for the manufacture or delivery of certain amounts of fentanyl is a minimum of 10 years in prison or a maximum life in prison. Well, today, more than 40 states are expected to unveil a $26 billion settlement connected to the opioid epidemic. It includes the nation's three largest drug distributors and also Johnson & Johnson. They've been, or they've been accused of allowing massive amount of painkillers to be shifted to illegal channels and downplaying the addiction risk. The government said the money recovered from the settlement will go to those affected by addiction. Three Republican House members lost appeals challenging fines they received for not wearing masks on the House floor earlier this year. Yesterday, the U.S. House Ethics Committee says Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, Kentucky's Thomas Massey and Ralph Norman of South Carolina have to pay $500 in fines. The Republicans say that the mandate didn't match the recent federal mask guidance during the COVID-19 pandemic. The guidance at the time stated fully vaccinated people can actually resume activities without wearing a mask or physically distancing. Well, we are only two days away from the Tokyo Olympics opening ceremony, and today the second to last stage ceremony for the Olympic torch relay was held in Tokyo. The Olympic torch relay has made it everywhere in Japan, and it's scheduled to end on Friday. Most of the torch relays that were supposed to go through Tokyo's public roads were canceled due to the state of emergency and also the rise of COVID-19 cases. The games were postponed for a year due to the, COVID, the coronavirus pandemic. They'll be held mostly without spectators and also under tight quarantine rules. Just days before the beginning of the Tokyo Olympics, American Beach Volleyball Olympian Taylor Crabb has tested positive for COVID-19 while in Tokyo. Crabb's brother, a fellow beach volleyball pro, described the situation as terrible and says that Taylor is fine and healthy. Crabb is the fifth Team USA Olympian to test positive for COVID-19. In other Olympic news, the first surprise uh, came early this morning when the U.S. women's soccer team lost their first round match against Sweden. Sweden outscored the U.S. 3-0 as it began group play. The Americans came into this game on a 44-game unbeaten streak. The U.S. trying to become this first women's team to win gold after winning the previous World Cup. This loss does not take them out of contention. In fact, though, back in 2008, the U.S. women's team lost to Norway in the opening round, and they went on to win the gold medal. Well, today, Tokyo's temperature topped 91 degrees. Of course, yesterday, the country's weather bureau issued heat stroke alerts for a fourth consecutive day. Behind the rising COVID cases in the city, heat has been a huge concern. Summer temperatures in Tokyo can spike to 95 degrees or more. Japan has also rebooted extra power plants, including a long dormant nuclear reactor and also taken in other steps to avoid a power crisis as temperatures soar and demand for air conditioners surges. And of course, KJAC NBC is Southeast Texas' home for the Olympics. Of course, we'll have the latest from all the games, starting with the opening ceremony this Friday morning. 